Good. Karen, how old are you? Uh, I'll, I'll be uh, 76. 76 in a Model S Plaid, and yes. she's driving it. Oh, Fastest yeah. production car in the world right here. 76-year-old's driving it. Oh, oh, I'm scared. Oh, come on. You got to hit it. Oh, <laughs> she's just toying with us. You're just toying with us, Karen. You're not scared. Oh, man. Oh, what wow. fun, what fun, what fun. You trolled me. You trolled me hard. We're going to blow you up on TikTok, Karen. Yeah, Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Mike R and Paul H. Thank you guys for choosing to support the channel. At least so far today, Tesla stock is holding up fairly well with the NASDAQ currently down around 3.5%. The market really not liking those inflation readings from Friday. And for whatever it may be worth to you guys, I have personally mentally prepared myself for the remainder of 2022 and most of 2023 to be a very challenging time for the stock market. It. Based on probabilities, I am not expecting this setup to be the current lows. I do think things could get worse. Once again, not being dogmatic about any of this, this is just what I'm personally prepared for based on a number of factors. And there have been many times when I wish I had more time in these daily videos. So I am going to start writing again to allow for that. So be sure to stay tuned for that. On that note of turmoil in the markets, Tesla and Bitcoin, I believe Tesla's cost basis for its Bitcoin is around $30,000 dollars which would mean in quarter two it will have an impairment loss to the tune of maybe 200 to 300 million dollars once again most analysts will back this out but if you just jump down to the bottom line and are a little shocked just remember there are things like this that are taking place yes it's a silly accounting rule but just fyi our friend alexander has put together an excellent video highlighting all of the fraud around this whole esg movement Highly encourage a watch. I will link her full video below. And just in case you don't have that kind of time, I'll also include a link to this tweet below. And she tries to summarize everything in about two minutes, but I do encourage a watch of the full video if you can. Alexandra, excellent work per the usual. I'd like to touch on a few things from the insider video yesterday. First, with regard to Austin setting up future lines for 2170 packs, just wanna be clear, there is no 2170 structural pack. The structural pack design is just for 4680 cells. I'm also being told that Austin is installing five times the equipment capacity to make 4680 cells relative to its Cato Road pilot line, so that's definitely encouraging. So when Tesla is confident with everything and they turn that on, then the production will ramp up that S-curve. Just like Alex shared on Twitter a few weeks back via this chart, I believe he may have updated it to say we are here around a million cells per month. Now, I'm not sure if that was because of my video or not, Either way, over the next 12 to 24 months, as long as things go well, Tesla should hit this inflection point on the way up. And I'm hearing that originally the 4680 pack was designed to have more cells, but due to cell constraints, that number had been dropped down to the number I'm hearing, 828 cells per pack, which is where some of this friendly debate has started. Now, just to be clear, most of you guys know I love Troy's work. I really respect his efforts. He apparently watches the channel, and so it's all good. There's no ill will here at all. It's just we're getting different information. So the simplest way to explain it, Troy is very confident in the 4680 cells being a 98 watt hour capacity. Thus, he's doing some backdoor math and taking that new 4680 pack size around 68 kilowatt hours to conclude that there can't be 828 cells in the pack. Whereas I'm personally hearing that 828 cells is a number that I can be pretty confident in, thus taking this same kilowatt hours that would have my estimated watt hours a little bit lower. Now, most importantly, I don't wanna be super dogmatic about any of this. Things at Tesla change very quickly. And while I absolutely trust my sources, at the end of the day, unless I'm looking at internal documents or looking at a pack that was just torn down, being able to count each cell, then I don't wanna be overly dogmatic here. And for whatever it's worth, to be clear, I would be happy to be proven wrong. I have absolutely zero pride in this endeavor. My ultimate goal is to get and share the truth with you guys. So 
If the truth turns out that there's only 690 cells in these packs, then that's awesome for everybody. We have found the truth and we can all move on. Troy and I have talked offline and ultimately we're both just trying to get to the truth here. It's just currently we're getting different information and coming to different conclusions. And lastly, for now, I will say there's at least a small chance that Tesla is using these dummy cells in the 4680 pack that would ultimately result in the non-dummy cells having higher watt hour figures closer to what Troy is expecting. Now, having said there's a small chance, I'm also being told that Tesla is no longer using these dummy cells in 4680 packs. However, this source, in my opinion, is unconfirmed. So take it for what it's worth. That door is still open to some degree. So Troy, if you see this, you're the man. Keep doing what you're doing. I will link your Patreon below because your work is awesome. And hopefully we can work together to get to the truth here as soon as possible. Moving on, LG Energy Solutions has said it plans to invest 580 billion won to add nine gigawatt hours worth of production capacity of 4680 cylindrical cells. LGES also said it would invest 150 billion won in a different factory to add four gigawatt hours of production capacity of 2170 cylindrical cells. They're saying these new lines should be ready for mass production by the second half of 2023. So for Tesla to add nine gigawatt hours of 4680 capacity, although it probably won't be until 2024, currently Tesla is only producing around one gigawatt hour per year of 4680 cells based on the current monthly run rate. Yes, this could change very quickly, and yes, that production will ramp at some point. However, just going off the run rate to give you some context. Now, I'm unsure if other LG ES customers will be looking to get their hands on 4680 cells, but so far, I would presume most of it will be for Tesla. Here we have a few of the legacy auto leaders petitioning Congress asking that the per automaker cap be removed in terms of the EV credit with a sunset date set for a time when the EV market is more mature. Citing recent economic pressures and supply chain constraints are increasing the cost to make EVs, which in turn puts pressure on the price to consumers. And last week, Ford Executive Chairman Bill Ford made an unannounced trip to Capitol Hill to make the case for extending the tax credit. However, Manchin is still staunchly opposed, saying when we can't produce enough product for the people that want it and we're still going to pay them to take it, it's absolutely ludicrous in my mind. So he brings up a valid point. However, how much do you factor in the climate change and where we need to go as a society? That's up for debate. Mary Barra, Jim Farley, Carlos Tavares, and Toyota's Tetsuo Ogawa have all signed off on this letter. The new letter makes no reference to the union incentive, so we're about to find out how much lobbying power these CEOs have. And remember, Tesla and GM have already used up the credit, and Toyota and Ford should be next in line to use up theirs, but we'll see if this cap gets removed. Journalist Matt Potter, who does some writing for the Washington Post, shared this screenshot on Twitter effectively arguing that Tesla's autopilot may have a feature where it auto shuts off within one second of an imminent accident so that Tesla's data looks a little bit better. It says, NHTSA said it discovered 16 instances when this occurred that autopilot aborted vehicle control less than one second prior to the first impact. However, directly from Tesla's vehicle safety report that says, to ensure our statistics are conservative, we count any crash in which autopilot was deactivated within five seconds before impact, and we count all crashes in which the incident alert indicated an airbag or other active restraint deployed. Our crash statistics are not based on sample data sets or estimates. Further, Tesla says, we also do not differentiate based on the type of crash or fault. For example, more than 35% of all autopilot crashes occur when the Tesla vehicle is rear-ended by another vehicle. It's important because Potter's tweet kind of took off. And even if autopilot does shut off before an accident, you could argue that it should as you don't want autopilot to continue operating all the way through a crash. Now, then you argue, well, the driver needs more than one second to react. But to that, I would say the driver is always responsible, autopilot or not, FSD or not, right now, the driver is ultimately responsible. Here we have some fun quarterly data. The Model Y accounted for nearly one out of every three new US EVs registered in the first quarter this year. Looping the Model 3 into the equation, these two accounted for 62.8% of new EV registrations in Q1, while Tesla's four models together captured 71.7% .7 of the EV market. My favorite stat though, according to Experian registration data, EVs topped 5% of US new vehicle registrations in the first quarter. 
For comparison, in quarter one of 2020, this figure was only 2.2%. And from Q1 2020 to Q1 2022, Tesla boosted its share of the entire US auto market, not just EVs, from 1.4 to 3.3%. Ford was spotted benchmarking a Model S Plaid. This happens all the time. The question is what type of vehicle is Ford looking to develop that could be compared to the Model S Plaid? So far, it really just has the Mach-E and the GT trim. So are they planning another more higher performance vehicle? We'll wait and see. And honestly, I would pay money to hear the Ford engineers conversations behind closed doors about what they really think about the Model S Plaid. Tesla updated its Tesla Vision page saying Model 3 and Model Y's built from June this year for the Australian market now utilize the camera-based vision-only system. Some features will be temporarily limited or inactive, including auto steer, will be limited to a maximum speed of 140 kilometers per hour. Joseph Spack from RBC Capital raised Tesla to outperform from sector perform, however, decreased the price target from 1,175 to 1,100. However, keep in mind his tip rank ratings. He did say Tesla's early focus on vertical integration, not just batteries and raw materials, but motors, semiconductor software is likely to pay off, especially as industry supply of critical materials may become an issue around 2027 and 28, and Tesla may be able to control more of their own destiny. So not that insightful, but he's not wrong. I did want to point out though, analysts surveyed by Factset are currently still expecting Tesla Q2 deliveries around 287,000. Personally, I'm hoping that this figure comes down so the bar becomes a little bit lower. Indonesia still wooing Tesla now with a proposal to Tesla for an EV factory with an annual production capacity of 500,000 cars. The government has suggested Tesla build a plant nearby Batang Regency in the central Java province where it can get a steady supply of electricity from renewable sources. Don't expect to get too much detail on these negotiations, however, as the government has signed a confidentiality agreement with Tesla. However, we know Indonesia pushing hard to have Tesla manufacture in the area. Overall, great to see that these talks are seemingly still moving forward. You've probably seen these by now, but real quick, Dave Lee shared some emails from Elon to employees. First one, this has been a very tough quarter, primarily due to supply chain issues in China. We need to rally hard to recover. I'd like to congratulate the Fremont team for achieving an all-time record production day last week and Berlin for making almost a thousand cars last week. This is great stuff. Shanghai is returning to full strength and Austin is spooling up. Onward to victory. So great to get a baseline expectation for Berlin at the moment, around 1,000 cars per week. And in terms of Fremont's record day, going back to Troy, he shared data on Fremont from Q4 and Q1. And he said, my best guess, the highest day before quarter two was around 1450 and Fremont may have reached 1500 on a recent day. Then again, Dave Lee shared a second email from Elon shortly thereafter. Elon to everybody, we actually build great real products that people love and make their lives in the world better. That is so profound. It's an honest day's work that you can feel in your heart. Whatever else is going on in this messed up world, know that at least what you are doing is pure goodness and that I have infinitely more respect and admiration for you than the richest person on Wall Street, love Elon. So to everybody out there that says Elon is just a cold hearted business thug, I share exhibit A for why I believe you are wrong. The Model Y was just released in Australia and in a matter of days, the demand is already much higher than Tesla was expecting. Originally, the first delivery window for the Model Y was August to November for the base model and the performance was November to February. Fast forward just a few days to now and the earliest you can expect a Model Y is February and possibly as long as May, 2023. In response to that article, Elon said, we're working on accelerating right-hand drive Model Y production, didn't expect demand to be so high. Elon may not have, but I think at least a few of us did. The Model S Plaid set another quarter mile record at 8.8 .8 seconds and Elon chimed in saying, nice. If you wanna learn more about the details and the tires and the weight, I will include a link to this thread below. Apparently Tesla is hiring 500 to 600 people per month at Giga Berlin, working with the National Employment Agency to recruit workers no longer needed at German car makers. A total of 4,100 to 4,500 staff have been recruited so far. I'm not positive if recruited means hired, but I would assume yes. Minister Jörg Steinbach said at a conference, of which around 10% were foreigners. Giga Berlin has been working on two shifts since May 23rd, but the expectation is still for a third shift sometime later this year. 
However, Tesla does seem to be following through with some salaried cuts as the Singapore country manager has been let go. According to his LinkedIn page, no real other detail was given. Here we have some comments from Elon at that recent all hands meeting that Electrek apparently got a recording of. Elon said, we're now the biggest car factory in North America. That's pretty sick. Sometimes people are surprised like Tesla is making cars in the Bay Area. Yeah, not only we do, but we have the biggest car factory in North America. We also recently exceeded the number of cars produced from when that factory was in the hands of Toyota and GM. And Elon said, I think we even have the potential to beat that number by 50%. Tesla was the most purchased new car in Switzerland for all of 2021. And remember, the Model Y didn't go on sale there until August. It also means the best-selling Swiss car is an EV for the first time, and it's the Model 3 taking the number one slot. The Model 3 coming in at 5,074 units and the Skoda Octavia, 4,974. Real quick, which EV does the Skoda Octavia remind you of? My answer, the Polestar 2. Here we have GM dropping the four-year degree requirement for many jobs and will focus on skills, as they should, because who has been doing this for the better part of a decade? I'll give you a hint. Starts with a T and rhymes with Besla. We get an update from some Rivian members on forums saying that their R1S deliveries have been delayed until the summer and some even later, with at least a few deliveries being pushed to October through December. This news has already been covered ad nauseum over the past few days, so in case you somehow missed it, here you have it. Already plenty of content out there if you want more detail. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.